Hello and welcome to Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. I'm your host, Robin Norgren, and I'm going to start uh, this uh, series with an excerpt from a book by Kelly Ray Roberts called Taking Flight. And the subject is Unearthing Buried Dreams. Do you have an inner voice, a gentle whisper quietly nudging you to listen? What does it say? Does it tell you to begin that creative project you've been putting off? Or does it tell you to dream bigger, perhaps start your own creative business? Maybe it's encouraging you to begin writing that book or to travel to exotic places. It may just be a whisper, a small voice tucked deep inside the pockets of your heart, but really, It's your life calling you. The whispers of our lives want us to take notice, to nurture their message and to discover our own potential. Whether they're quietly nudging us from time to time with long periods of busy silence in between, or annoying us with their persistence, their presence is important and meaningful, and we must listen. As Julia Cameron wisely wrote, we need to listen to the voices within us that want further expression in our lives. We must make the unconscious conscious. This is what it's all about. Acknowledging the voice of our dreams, our creativity, our heart, our lives. There was a time when I ignored the whispers. In fact, I ignored them most of my my life. But when I started listening to the language of my yearnings, buried dreams became unearthed, and creative joy exploded in my life. The same creative joy is possible for you, too, whether you are a stay-at-home mom with a sharp creative eye or an experienced artist looking for the next step. No matter where we stand in our creative journey, we all have whispers. My hope is that you will think about those whispers in the coming weeks and really start to find out what it means for yourself. Whispers. We all have them. They're the little voices in our conscious minds that tug at our hearts and want our attention. These whispers, these seeds of dreams, encourage us even when we're not entirely willing to listen and to simply begin to begin planning that vacation we've always wanted, to finally start that creative project, to begin writing that book, to write that poem, to work less, to apologize more. They're like little bitty wings needing the nurturing of our spirits to give them flight in a real and true existence. Unfortunately, the whispers of our dreams often get suffocated by the constraints and pressures of our everyday lives. If we're not careful, one day leads to another, and before we know it, years have gone by and we're fully neglected, we're fully neglecting them. We don't realize it, but these inner yearnings are our living dreams, our life's possibility today. If we're not conscientious about their presence in our lives, then they get buried underneath the layers of everyday details, cleaning, running errands, vacations, house renovations, day jobs. Then, one day, maybe even years later, we wake up and wonder, who am I really? What are my passions? What are my dreams for my life? And where did they go? This is exactly what happened in my own life. I did everything I thought I was supposed to do. I went to college and pursued a practical yet compassionate career in social work. I went on to get a master's degree and worked for a decade as a medical social worker. In between career moves, I fell in love, married, moved 3,000 miles away, bought a house, and settled into a very quiet life of homeownership, a day job, and an occasional vacation. I was busy building a life largely on personal and societal expectations, that not once in all those years did I tend to the inner workings 
and the yearnings of a creative life. Not once. Maybe this hasn't been your experience. Maybe you're a woman who is fully and blissfully in tune with your life's path. A woman whose instincts led the way to a life whole and fulfilling. Perhaps you're right where you want to be, doing exactly what you want to do. And if so, I applaud you. But one thing I've learned along the way is that even the most intuitive and self-aware artist can benefit from testing the limits of her creativity and pushing the boundaries of her comfort zone. Simply getting started down this path can be one of the hardest, most challenging steps of our lives. Our devotion this morning is coming from 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18, from the New Living Translation and the thoughts of Eugene Peterson. So we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart on us, on the inside where God is making new life, not a day goes by without its, his unfolding grace. These hard times are small com- potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow. But the things we can't see now will last forever. When life around us seems to be falling apart, it can be harder and harder to believe the truth about your destiny in Christ and his coming kingdom. Note that Paul doesn't talk about the hard times eventually ending. Instead, he reminds us that the hard times are going to be replaced with something unimaginably better than a lack of pain, a celebration, unfolding grace, and new life. Even though some of these things are yet to come, the seeds of those good things have already been planted in your life. They are growing every day, no matter what surrounds you. Do you feel like giving up? Like things are falling apart or beyond redemption? Cry out to God for a change in perspective so that you can see your, that your hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times. Ask him how to show you evidence or ask him to show you evidence of the new life he is making within you. Not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. As you enter your routine today, refuse to see the difficulties you encounter as anything but grace. This is an excerpt from the book Crushing by T.D. Jakes. There are things in your life that you've placed in the ground because you've labeled them as dead. You have decreed that they don't have life and purpose. Perhaps you've walked away from a marriage or even bade farewell to your relationship with God. As your sorrow is still tangible, a thick darkness now surrounds your heart, and you are slow in returning to its gravesite because of the pain you once felt. That trauma caused a tremendous shaking in every aspect of your life, And you have taken an oath to never hope again, never dream again, never love again, and never again take a chance that love, that life could be better. But the very fact that life emerged from the grave as a response to Jesus' death suggests that you're buried, that what you've buried still has purpose. Yet this truth is difficult for you to accept because you struggle to realize that its appearance is quite different from how you last saw it. Once corrupted with human effort and sin, it has returned wrapped in the glory of a Savior who wishes you you would turn again and see the life that now inhabits it. Whatever your passion may be, your dream, your family, church, business, book, Jesus did not die just to save only you. 
His death was for every part of you that you had given up on. Look again. With the master, it is being reborn as he steps out of his tomb with all power in his hands. Just like the resurrected saints that walk the streets of Jerusalem on the day of Jesus' death, were the crowning of the birth that would come from his resurrection, that which you have buried is crowning. The familiar shaking you are feeling does not stem from a sorrow you cannot forget. On the contrary, it is from a birthing that is taking place in your life. Remember that seeds eventually develop shoots that emerge from the soil in which they were once trapped. That emergence, then, is the breaking forth that has caused the unsteadiness in your life. Fear not. This is not a repeat of your darkest days. The quaking you are feeling is the dawning of a new you being pushed through the veil of Christ's suffering and death to something far more joyous and grand. The crushing of the grape not only expresses the juice from the flesh, but it also separates the unstable parts of the grape from the juice. Have you seen what happens to grape clusters that hang on too long from the branch? Eventually, their connecting stem dries up and loses sufficient strength to bear the weight of the fruit. As a result, the grapes plummet to the ground to rot, ferment, and be consumed by insects, never realizing their full potential. It's this cut-off existence that the Vinter has so endeavored to save us from in order to show us who we really are. Succulent fruit falling to the ground and becoming nothing more sounds like the wasting of a human life that never matured into something greater than its original form. As a result, it's as if the fruit never existed. If you choose to dwell on the fruit that has already fallen and spoiled, then you miss out on letting God redeem that fruit by making you into his wine. And it is your choice. You often don't choose the painful events that disrupt your life, but you always choose how you will respond. You choose what you will do with your crushing. You can ignore the suffering and deny the despairing and attempt to celebrate. You can also resign yourself to the despondency that sours when crushing seems to have no purpose. Or you can choose to enter into the tension between celebrating and suffering that crushing requires. The choice is yours. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you want to see um, any of or hear any of my other podcasts, you can look me up on Spotify. Also, check out my um, spaces all over the web by finding all the links on Instagram under at Robin underscore Norgren or at UBU for life.